Sakura was expelled from school, and when he got this news, he was shocked. He thought it was a joke at first. Students outside the principal's door were hearing the conversation. What could he have done to have gotten expelled? One of the students outside told another student that she heard he started schooling there two weeks ago. It was disappointing to see him already getting expelled. Another student said it could be because he hit a classmate the other day. No one really knew what he did or why he got expelled. They came to the conclusion that if he actually hit a student, it was right to have expelled him and told themselves to watch out, or they might get expelled too. Sakura was frustrated and just left them to say whatever they wanted to. What really happened was that he heard someone getting bullied and rushed in to help the victim, but it ended up turning into a huge fight. And to make matters worse, he was the one that ended up getting beaten. But he was in this situation because the bully turned out to be the son of the student council president. So the school was literally pushed to force him out of the school. They would rather make the president happy than think about the future of some kid. As he walked out of school, he thought to himself, the bully in question saw him and stopped him, but he didn't answer him. And the bully got furious and kicked him on the note that he was being ignored by Sakura. He told him he was wrong if he thought he could escape from him that easily and then poured water on him. Sakura fell to the ground. He told Sakura that he didn't know what a supporting character like him was thinking, but next time, if he wanted to carry out justice, he should remember to choose the right person. He is such a mean person. Sakura got home to face his parents after getting expelled. The moment he got home, he told his parents, who took it well and decided to call the school, trying to encourage him that there was still a way. But he had given up and told them not to worry about it anymore. He ran towards his room in shame as his father called him back, telling him it wasn't over. But he yelled, telling him it was over. He also told them it was all his fault. His parent didn't know what to do. He came out of the house into the streets and stood on the bridge, starting at the road below him. He rested his arms on the rails as he taught about how adults act about things he thought were too difficult for them to talk about. He, deep down, wasn't happy with the way he was living and wanted more. He needed to be free. In the process of his thoughts, he sighted a building and wondered what it was. He asked himself if it was a construction site and when they built it as he had been passing her and had never seen it. He then noticed that this structure wasn't just in one place. It was in three different spots. Suddenly, he noticed that the floor started shaking as he thought this was over. Everything came crashing and he looked up to understand what was going on. It turned out that another building appeared out of nowhere he looked at the building behind him and saw that it looked just like the structure he had seen earlier. He looked closely and noticed the stairs. He checked his phone and noticed that this particular type of structure was all over the world. He also saw that someone had already taken pictures of what could be found inside. That was when it clicked that this might actually be a dungeon. Could this be the excitement he wants? This would be a whole new start for him. He then decided that to find joy, he needed to enter it. After these new structures had begun causing chaos in the country, as reporters told the people that there was new information that someone was attacked by strange creatures when they entered the structure and some of them were murdered. They also announced that the government issued a notification in which they were to conduct an investigation and issue an emergency evacuation order the next day. The reporter also urged those living in the area to stay away from the structures. Sakura, unaware of the reports and announcement, had already entered and reached the end of the stairs. What he saw was stunning. As he entered the dungeon, the level system got activated and the system also announced that making him wonder what a level system was. He realized the voice came from inside his head the voice said some other things, which made him wonder if this was some kind of game. The system showed him his level stats, and he was incredibly low. The system asked that he allow it to guide him, and told him that if his HP dropped, he would most likely die. And before it could add to the information, he told it he already knew the basics. The system apologized. Sakura asked what skill meant, and the system explained to him how the whole thing worked as he walked inside the dungeon. The system told him that when he got to a certain level, he would be given a random skill, which was the infinite level up. He asked the system to explain better to him. It told him it was a skill that allowed him to level up beyond the level limit. I mean, the skill already explained itself, though its name wasn't the attentive this school. As he walked in further, he saw a monster on the floor, which the system asked him to defeat. The system told him to point his hands at the monster and shout the skill's name. He did this and burnt the monster with fire magic. He was happy he did this. The system told him his skill had increased by one. After he did this, the system told him that it was the end of his training. He asked what its name was, but it told him he could call him anything and the best name Sakura could come up with was dropping out. We get that he still has regrets about what happened in his former school, but he could have done better. After naming it, the system based him by. In his head, he couldn't phantom why the system decided to disappear now, but he soon figured out as a huge giant monster was standing right behind him. Trouble. The system brought out the monster's stats. It was a Minotauros 
a level 20 monster. The monster hit him, and as he flew in the air, Sakura thought to use his magic, but it didn't budge. He couldn't use it. He requested that the system open his status, and as he saw it, he realized his stats were low. He started panicking as he should. This monster was huge, and it seemed difficult to get out of this mess easily. The monster attacked him, but he ran as fast as he could from the monster. He then saw a slime monster like the one he attacked as he ran and defeated it. His level increased with this. He also found out that his experience points were bound to increase 1,000 times more when he defeated the monster. That was a huge plus for him. He then decided that he was going to level up enough to beat the monster. Back home the next day, Sakura's mom came in as his dad started thinking. She told him she received a text message from their son, telling her he was in the dungeon. Sakura seemed to have gotten a hold of the dungeon, and as much as he knew, he couldn't defeat the monster at his tail. Now, he continued defeating other monsters as he ran in an effort to eventually level up and beat the monster after. But is this a smart move? He is bound to get tired after running around like that. He was in the dungeon for a day and learned a lot about the dungeon. He noticed that it didn't matter how many times the floor was destroyed. They always returned to normal. He also understood how the monsters worked, as they were always revived after a certain period of time. Now, is this good or bad for him? He was able to contact his mom, and he noticed that the monster stopped chasing him when he got to the stairs. It could mean that they were bound to the dungeon and weren't allowed to come out, which is good for the humans outside. To prove that he is quite smart, he took advantage of this. He fought when he felt like it and went to rest by the stairs when he needed to. The monster outsmarted him and forced him into a corner. His MP at this point was quite low, and as he was cornered, it was impossible for him to level up. He still needed to level up a bit before he could be able to reach the monster level. Not only could he not level up, he was hungry and very tired. Just as he was about to give up, a light shone, reviving the monsters he had defeated before. He killed them and gained experience points. He got to level 25 and ran to defeat the monster. He was able to defeat the monster, and with this, his level increased by 18 points. This was just what he needed. The thrill of defeating monsters, and winning was just what he needed. Back outside, people were seriously protesting to be allowed access into the dungeon. Ministers had a meeting concerning them, and one of them told them to open the door to the people. He explained the reason, but one of them told him that wasn't a valid reason. He further explained that guns and modern scientific equipment couldn't be used in the dungeon, adding that what was needed wasn't the army, but people with high levels. He told them that they would tell the people that exploring the dungeons comes with its own risks, and that the people would be responsible for their decisions to explore the dungeon. This this man seemed really bright, and he was really posing a good point. He also told them they needed a name for those who would decide to explore the dungeon. He then addressed that they called them the player, a new start for everyone. Eight months later, people started entering the dungeon and went through the same process Sakura went through. A new group of people entered and faced a Minotaurus, but something was strange about it. Aya, a girl in the group, asked that they get out of there, explaining that it would be difficult for them to get out of there with their current level. Hiro told the girls to run first. Aya asked why, and he told her it would be difficult if they ran together. He told her that he would hold the monster back for them as they ran. Aya didn't want to leave him in the hands of the monster, but he told her not to underestimate him. He fought the monster, but when it got to a point, the monster overpowered him in the process of almost getting hit by the monster. He remembered when he made the decision to ask the girl if they would love to participate in the game. He thought this was final and he was going to die, but before he knew it, the monster was defeated by some random boy. After he killed the monster, he asked if they were okay. He told them he heard screams, so he rushed down to help them, but they were surprised. He defeated the monster with just one blow. Hero decided to ask what level he was, and his answer shocked them all. He was at level 1000. Hero and Sakura spoke about how he got to reach level 1000. Hero didn't believe him, but he showed him proof. Hero told him he should be careful about whom he tells, because his level can cause others to harm him. He told him that if this came out, not only would the government, but the whole world would want to monitor him and take advantage of him. He added that he could lose that freedom he so yearned for. Hearing this helped him rethink his decision to tell Hero, and he he asked him to just pretend that he hadn't heard anything from him. Hero told him not to worry about it. He knew he was a good person. He saved them all, so keeping his secret was the last thing he could do for him. He told him the girls hadn't heard anything, so it was fine. Sakura thanked him, and henceforth he knew he had to be careful. Aya walked toward them and thanked Sakura. It turned out they had heard everything. Aya told him he was really strong and asked if he was aiming for a specific dungeon. She told him the country's first trial was completing the H-rank Red Shadow Dungeon in Okinawa. She kept talking, saying that the reward for defeating the boss on the deepest floor was 30 million and they would also be getting a bonus. This was a new mission for Sakura. This whole thing was getting interesting for him. He decided to go back and told them he would be leaving the next day, which was Monday. But the other girl corrected him and told him the next day was Saturday. He didn't 
didn't even know the time or day it was. He decided not to tell them how long he had been in the dungeon. It was sure that his parents would have been so worried about him. He left them. Hiro told the girls he was getting old and he would not be able to protect them anymore. But Aya interrupted him and asked if he was going to give us now. She encouraged him that failing now was not a big deal and told him they just needed to be the strongest team. Sakura came out after eight months and it was freezing outside. He saw that a lot of things had been created for players. He went into one of the dungeon centers to sell some items and the attendant was shocked to see how many things he brought to sell. When he saw her expression, he asked if there was anything wrong. She told him she was just surprised his back could contain all the items he had brought. He explained that it was a magic bag from a monster called Adamante Eat. It could contain a lot of magical items no matter how much or how heavy. She was thrilled and told him he was really strong. He knew he shouldn't tell how strong he was, so he probably wouldn't say much. He then saw a dungeon entrance in the store and asked why. The girl told him the dungeon was built around the entrance. She told him it was a low-rank dungeon, but no one had been able to defeat the boss, and she told him it wouldn't be a big deal for someone as strong as him. He asked her how much it took to appraise items. She answered that in a few minutes, he told her he was going to try defeating the boss. On the five floors of the dungeon, two men on this level talked about how they heard this place was scary and came to check it out. In the process of talking, one of them saw Sakura in midair. He saw the Slime King and figured out it was the boss of this place. It was very fast, which explained why no one had been able to defeat it. He thought about what to do and decided to use his ice magic on it. With this, he defeated the boss, and an item fell out. His level increased by an insane amount, 19900. This is mind-blowing. He figured out why defeating Defeating the Slime King had so much reward. He was also given another new skill, Flying Clouds. He tried the skill, but there was a limit to what he could do, as the skill was still on level 1. Two days later, he got to Okinawa, and he didn't even go to visit his parents at all. That was not so nice, but anyway, he is the boss of his own life. When he got there, he overheard some people talking about how difficult the task of defeating the boss of the dungeon was. He wasn't going to listen to their words anyway, as he walked towards the entrance of the dungeon. Before he entered, a man called him and told him he would advise that he give up entering the dungeon even if he was being enticed by the money involved. He went further and told him it was hard to even for a level 66 like him. They kept talking but were interrupted by a helicopter landing. A girl and her guards came down and told him to move out of the way. He called her a child, but she told him she wasn't and pointed out that he wasn't either. She introduced herself as Maria. The man Sakura was talking to had disappeared. She told him the dungeon was not a big deal and that she was on level 99. After talking and having a little argument, she entered the dungeon. He entered shortly after her and he noticed that inside the dungeon looked nice. He then looked to the side, only to see the girl being chased by a monster. He saw her and asked if she was the level 99 kid. She ran towards him, shouting for help. He killed the monster with just one blow, and this surprised her. He asked if she was okay and stretched his hand to help her up, but she told him she didn't ask for his help. He asked her why she was lying. She stood up by herself. He asked her why she ran instead of fighting. She replied, saying there wasn't any other way. She is really a spoiled child. She told him she had never defeated a monster that still moved. He asked if she lied about being at level 99. She explained that her guards beat the monster up for her, and she ended its life and leveled up with that. That was such a way to level up smartly, but she wouldn't have any experience fighting. Sakura heard this and decided he was going to leave her, but she ran to him and hugged him from the back. She told him that she was going to give him special permission to join her group, but he showed her that the exit was at the back of the room. Sakura questioned her about what she was trying to accomplish. In all honesty, he had no feelings for her at all. As a result of her arrogance, she was requesting that he submit to her with such hostility. She did not pay attention to him, and in instead held him even more tightly. He then instructed her to go outside and ask the folks who were dressed in black for assistance. She made it clear to him that she was terrified and that she required his assistance in bringing the monsters to her. It was her fervent request that they work together, and she vowed that she would not let him go until he agreed to her request. Not only did he tell her that he understood, but he also requested that she let go of him. He went on to explain to her that there was no benefit to her having him. Maria explained to him that she was doing this in order to demonstrate to her parents that she had reached an increased level of maturity. He told her that he was aware that she was not here for the money. As the individual who had successfully conquered the Red Shadow Dungeon, she expressed her desire to be recognized for her accomplishments. He thought about how this would be of benefit to him and agreed to work with her. He told her all she needed to say was that she had defeated the dungeon alone. He really wanted to live Loki. They shook hands and started hunting. He told her if she wanted to really defeat the dungeon boss, she had to defeat monsters and gave her a dagger. She hesitated at first, but she summoned the courage to defeat the monster. 
monster. She was so surprised to have defeated the monster without any help. After this, in her excitement, she tripped on the stairs and fell. They reached the third floor, and Sakura decided to ask her what skills she had learned, as he had never seen her using them. She told him she had four skills mastered and proceeded to show him. She showed him the first vacuum magic. Sakura was surprised this kind of skill existed. She explained what the skill was about, but told him she was bad with her control. She showed him the second skill, which was recovery magic. She also showed him the third, which was retrieval magic. He asked her if this meant she could revive the dead. She told him that was possible as she was the only one who could use the magic in the whole world. Then, finally, the fourth was getting skill experience ten times more than the normal points. He thought about what this could mean, as he had never heard about that skill before. She then asked what skills he had, but he didn't answer her, and she got angry. He told her all the skills he had and was surprised. She told him he was very amazing and that he was also very strong. She then started ranting about her being the strongest after him. He didn't want to talk much, so he told her to leave him alone as she had spoken too much. They faced a group of zombies, which Maria was too scared to face. Sakura ended up beating them. As they kept on walking, they saw a man struggling with a monster, and as he got bitten, Maria told Sakura she was going to help the man. After they saved the man, he thanked them for saving him and recovering his magic. The man left them, but Maria stopped him and told him they had just come from there. She asked why he was going in the opposite direction, but he told her he was going back. Sakura asked if that meant someone already completed it, but the man told him that wasn't true. He told them they must be very strong people, but just being strong wasn't enough to complete the dungeon. What does this mean? They then got to the seventh floor and saw so many people there. They saw a huge body of poison in the water. Maria asked a lady next to her if the water there was really poisonous. She told him that was right, and that if she touched it, her body would slowly become numb, and she wouldn't be able to move anymore. She told her there was an idiot who didn't think and just jumped in a bit, but was quickly saved by a lady in glasses. She then asked if any of them could use detoxification magic, but they told her they didn't have any. She revealed to them that she, along with everyone else, was waiting for someone who possessed the ability to do detoxification magic. They weren't really going to stand around waiting for someone to just magically waltz in with detoxification magic, so Maria inquired what they were going to do instead. He informed her that the concentration of the pool of poison was not the only problem, and he made the decision to carry her. He instructed her to grab on tightly and then leaped. She became aware of what he was doing and, out of panic, informed him that they were going to crash. However, just as they were landing, he utilized his ability to fly clouds. Maria was blushing as she recalled how he had held her tightly as they jumped. The reality was that if he hadn't been holding her tightly, she may have fallen. After that, they came upon a set of stairs that led to the subsequent floor. During this particular instance, Maria hesitated, but Sakura reminded her that she needed to make her parents proud. However, by this point, she had already begun to question the choices that she was making. She told him she was going to tell her parent after they defeated the dungeon, and they went further into the dungeon. Sakura fought as she supported him from behind. She still hadn't found the real courage to fight the monster. After Sakura defeated another monster, Sakura asked if she was okay and petted her head. He saw her as his little sister, even though he didn't have one in real life. She asked why so many monsters had been arriving suddenly. After walking enough, Sakura asked if they could stop somewhere and rest, but Maria didn't agree. From his drop, he brought out a camp tent they could stay till they were ready to continue their hunt. He told them he had everything she might need, from food all the way to clothes. He is so powerful and smart too. He also told her that he was going to guard the tent so she could sleep first. She saw his magic bag and asked what it was. He explained what it was and asked him to get on for her. They made a pinky promise and she hopped to bed later. She thanked him and asked if he was on the same level as Kaido from Sanku no Gurin. He was surprised to hear that she knew this. She told him what she knew and hoped that she could see the team leader of the group. He told her that he had once gone on an adventure with them and he hadn't even seen them until now. He told her to go to sleep. He thought about what happened when they met. In the dungeon seven months ago, when he first encountered the group, the head of the group was such a terrible guy to him. He referred to him as a child and inquired as to the reason he did not return home. He was told not to be concerned about it by the girl who was present among them. Another person gave him a hug and informed him that he was really interested. Even though Mizukawa was too timid to approach him, she confided in Benako about the questions she wanted to ask him. It was actually her who inquired as to whether or not he was a solo player, and she informed him that there was no need to disturb him if he did not know. The meaning of the term solo player was explained by her. After leaving where they were, they went to a location that was teeming with monsters to where they arrived. They all took a position and started attacking, after which they informed him of the name of their team. As they continued to chat, a monster assaulted Sakura, but he was able to kill it. Mizukawa used recovery magic on him after he noticed that his vision had become blurry and that he had passed out. The leader of their group inquired about his well-being upon his awakening. Upon recalling the events that transpired, he realized that he had been poisoned. Due to the presence of poison glands in its head, the monster was possibly
popularly known as the poison bird. In addition to this, he informed me that the poison might enter the body through the wound, causing damage gradually and ultimately leading to death. Sakura questioned why he was still alive. He explained to him that Mizukawa managed to extract the poison by the use of detoxification magic. During his sleep, he was able to take him to the 14th floor by utilizing his strength, as he stated further. He was taken aback when he heard that spells similar to the ones he had just learned about existed in the world. Whoever was waiting by the pool of poison was anticipating this very moment. It was the person who was talking to Sakura who inquired about his level statistics. The things that he witnessed left him in such a state of shock that he left right away to go and reach the next level. Additionally, the other person inquired about his upcoming destination. After that, the leader demanded to know whether he and Sakura may have a brief conversation. Sakura inquired as to whether or not they were all members of Iria's school club before the leader could make any statement. The leader responded in the affirmative and complimented him on his degree of expertise and level of performance. In response to Sakura's inquiry as to the reason for their decision to become players, the leader explained that he regarded it as an opportunity to explore with his buddies. Not only did this present him with a wonderful opportunity to enhance his friendship with his friends, but it also served as a really good incentive for him to go out and explore with them. He also noted that he found it interesting to talk to him, and he mentioned that it was intriguing. In addition to that, he noted that Kaido was experiencing a more interesting experience than he had initially. On the 14th floor, where they continued their trek, Sakura was concerned about something that was going on in relation to the issue. While Mizukawa was approaching him, he conveyed his appreciation to her for restoring his health. He was a really cautious person. She informed him that she had done nothing wrong, but he told her it wasn't true since he admitted that he would have passed away if she hadn't been right there. She reassured him that everything was great, despite the fact that she was not like everyone else, and that she possessed skills that were advantageous to them all. He expressed his appreciation to her for saving him once more. The leader informed Sakura that the air on the stairs appeared to be cold as they neared the stairs. Sakura sensed the air on the stairs. As they continued to converse, the floor boss emerged from the room. Kamashiro asked if the boss was down there, and Kaido and Benito decided to play rock, paper, scissors to decide. They are so childish and brave compared to shy Mizukawa. Sakura didn't understand what they were doing, so he called Mizukawa and asked. Benito told him that defeating the boss would give them a lot of experience points, so they used this game to decide who would kill the boss. Kaido didn't want Sakura to join in because he was already at level 71. It wouldn't be nice to make him level up when they were still below. Mizukawa told him that wasn't how it should be. She told them Sakura was their friend, so they had to add him to their game. Kaido eventually agreed to have Sakura follow them, even though he didn't seem so pleased with the idea. He didn't have a choice, majority of the group didn't mind Sakura joining them. They made their way up to the 15th level, where Kamashiro cautioned Kaido to be cautious about moving too rapidly because it was quite dark. As they continued to move forward, a monster appeared out of nowhere and was about to attack Mizukawa. However, Sakura was able to move swiftly enough to strike it. Due to the fact that this caused them to stop in their tracks, Sakura continued to combat the creature, and he instructed Mizukawa to get back. The fact that Kyoto leaped in to attack the beast gives the impression that Kaido saw Sakura as a threat and considered him to be a competitor against him. Because there was no location for him to do it, Kaido instructed Sakura to take a step back and take a look at the situation. Mizukawa requested that he demonstrate his hand to her, and Kaido instructed them to observe how quickly he could defeat a boss adversary. Kamashiro inquired as to whether or not he was in any danger, but instead of responding to his inquiry, he informed him that there was something much more perilous. He had observed that his health had decreased after being bitten by the monster with two tails, and he found himself wondering if this was due to some kind of unique impact. At the same time that they were conversing, Benito noticed that Kyoto was being battered and was having a very difficult time fighting the monster. During the time that Mizukawa was running to heal Kaido, Sakura's hands were healed, and Mizukawa asked him to assist Kaido. Sakura proceeded to assist Kaido. When Kaido noticed that the monster was heading in his direction, he went to Mizukawa and informed her that it was going to continue attacking her. Kaido was furious with himself for such risky behavior. Benito was flung onto the floor, and although she was attempting to stop it, she communicated to Mizukawa and Kaido that they needed to flee before it could reach them. They were all taken aback by the fact that Sakura was able to utilize his lightning power to eliminate the monster before it could reach any of them. As a result, he was able to enhance his score by 20 points. This was good for him. Kaido suddenly appeared and proceeded to punch Sakura, and everyone was shocked as to what he was doing. Kaido was jealous of a Sakura. He should have been on his knees to him, but he instantly became threatened by him. Instead of expressing gratitude to him for saving their lives, he was acting in a way that was both rude and weird. Suddenly, Kaido yelled and asked Sakura why he was trying to steal his prey. Man, you had the opportunity to fight with this monster, but you couldn't even hurt it. This is so disappointing. In light of the circumstances, Sakura couldn't help but marvel at how he could be so naive. Sakura's strength is definitely something that Kaido saw as a threat, and he probably had the impression that someone as small as Sakura could not possibly be that powerful.
Almost immediately, Kamashiro expressed his regret to him and informed him that he had not anticipated Kaido to behave in such a manner. This was something he had always stood against bullying. He was strong enough to fight alone. He had been on this journey alone, so there would have been no big deal if he had continued alone. Sakura shared with them that he had anticipated that things would eventually turn out that way, and he informed him that he was going back first and that he would most certainly be going back to hunting by himself. From that point on, he made the decision to walk by himself. The girls continued to cry out to him, but he did not accept their calls or turn around. Back to the present, Maria woke him up and asked why he was sleeping when he was supposed to be guarding them. He saw that she had changed her clothes and said they looked good on her. She looked cute, though. He asked her where she got the clothes from as he couldn't remember buying them, and she told him she had to alter the clothes a little bit. He also noticed that that the tent was gone. It turned out she had carefully folded it and it was on the floor. Sakura praised her for doing that too. After that, he and Maria carefully entered each floor, then eventually entered the 19th floor. They were surprised to see it looked so much like a maze. Sakura laughed and Mara wondered what was so funny. Sakura told her that if she put her hands on the wall of a maze, she was bound to find her way out. They were still talking when they noticed that someone was there with them. Maria told him she heard someone talking from a corner. In an effort to scare her, Sakura told her it was just like a horror movie. She told him what he was saying was too scary. Some people in armor saw them, and it turned out to be the group Sakura had left seven months before. Benito was surprised to see him. Mizukawa too. He and Maria were more surprised to see them. They were all surprised to see themselves. They didn't part previously on a good note. It is sure that the others would want to make this meeting worthwhile. Kaido might not like this, but there was nothing he could do. Even Kamashiro would want to make it up to him. Maria remembered how in love she was with the group, and how she decided to be just like them, even though they were about four years older than her. She always wanted to be like them. Benito wanted wondered who Maria was and asked if she was his girlfriend. Maria was surprised to see them. She was elated. She was all over the place as she began talking about all their powers. Kamashiro asked him who the talkative girl was. Sakura told them it had been long and told him Maria was their biggest fan. Benito walked towards her and asked her for her name, but she couldn't say anything. Mizukawa recognized her as a professional model for a famous magazine company. Sakura was shocked to hear this. Kamashiro asked what a model like her had to do with Sakura. He explained how they got to know each other and how he was helping her temporarily. Benito then offered to team up again. To Kaido and Sakura's surprise, Maria immediately accepted. Sakura was in his thoughts and accepted their offer too. Kaido didn't seem too pleased to accept them, but he didn't have a choice. As they walked, Sakura realized everyone was a celebrity except him. He then saw this advantage. As with this, he wouldn't be getting too much attention. Maria was experiencing the best time of her life since the people in her dream group were so willing to accept her. They were attacked by a monster. Sakura was able to defeat it more quickly than Kaido. It was clear that Kaido was not impressed, and it appeared that he was not going to accept Sakura's proposal. He is completely unaware that Sakura is not even on the same level as him. The people came to a stop in order to eat. Mizukawa moved from where she was seated to where Sakura was seated, and the two of them had a conversation and laughed together. When they reached the 21st floor, they came face face to face with the boss of the dungeon. Kaido was not going to let Sakura have this, so he instructed them not to touch it. Sakura responded by telling Kaido that he would assist them if they needed it. Kamashiro made the request that Maria take a step back, instructing Benito to back Kaido up. In order to get recovery magic ready, he instructed Mizukawa. Kamashiro expressed his regret to Sakura for asking him to join forces with them. He added that if they weren't all together, it was certain that Sakura would have been able to defeat the monster without help. Undoubtedly, he would have been able to do so. During the time that Sakura Sakura was watching Kaido defeat the monster, he informed Kamashiro that this was indeed the case, and that even though he desired to defeat the boss, he also desired to be free. He realized that even though he was not free, he was still having a good time with the people he was with. Before they were all aware of it, something slammed into the location that they were in, and everyone, with the exception of him, collapsed. It was the floor's boss who was responsible for this, and he was perplexed as he saw all of them lying on the floor. He was the monster that did this. It was at this moment that he was compelled to assist them all in vanquishing this monster. Would he be able to beat it? This would be a very weird question to ask, seeing how strong he was, but let's look forward to the next chapter. It's being days since the, the reward bounty was put on anyone who could kill the boss of the Red Shadow Dungeon, people gathering around the dungeon, some players trying to go in, and some just watching. And right at that moment, a love broadcast from a news channel done by a reporter was started, called The Appeals of the Dungeon, and the reporter being reporter Dakota Coco who said she was present at the Red Shadow Dungeon, the most talked about dungeon recently. I'm their town in Okinawa showing to the whole town that there was as many players as possible gathering there, also telling them that according to her sources, the Takoda's little ear, the Senku Gurin team is also there with people being excited at that news and even said they would be willing to get their autograph once they return. And there have to be an interview for them and that she was really looking forward to the interview, adding that that particular dungeon was receiving a lot of attention 
because it's being five days since the government announced a reward for anyone who could complete the level, but they all are still waiting for who would emerge as the victor to clear the dungeon. Back in the dungeon, with the fight against the nine-winged monster, it attacked everyone as it exploded. Makoto, seeing this, ran as fast as he could to check up on her and see if she was hurt anywhere. But alas, what actually happened was that everyone in that room was seriously injured due to the nine tail power exploding. It was because Mizukawa was behind, that was why she was able to avoid it, and they were all badly injured. Looking at the situation, Makoto urged her as the survivor to save everyone, and as he finished his statement, the big bird returned. Makoto felt he could stop it, so he used his ice magic. However, to his surprise and amazement, the ice melted in an instant, and that looked very scary, but still, he insisted that Mizukawa took care of everyone except him, probably leaving him to defend them while she treated them. Hence, he returned to business and threw a fireball at it, but it still repelled it again. He thought neither physical nor ice attacks were effective against it. Even his fireball was pushed back, probably because its body itself was fire. Hence, he decided to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it in the air as he deployed his flying close magic. And once he was up in the air, he used his lightning magic in a bid to destroy the monster. But to his greatest surprise, again, the monster defends his attack. At that moment, the happenings in the past flashed right through his fave back then in school when he couldn't do anything while being bullied as his face was made fun of, made fun of his life and his coming to school. Even though he reacted back them, he couldn't do anything as he was always outnumbered. Now he thought if I Lunge could have stopped Sakuraba, maybe his classmates and his teachers would have been on his side, and maybe he would still have been in school. But as it stands, these weren't worth thinking about because he had found a place and he didn't want to lose it. Back to reality, he decided to give it his all, and he threw multiple lightning magic at the monster with arrogance, saying he and the monster were not on the same level and didn't want to lose. He will protect it while continuing his aggressive attack on the monster. His level increasing by 417 could only mean one thing. He had defeated the fire dragon, at last, had been able to do exactly what he had earlier set his mind to do, and didn't give up even though he and the group were at the brink of defeat with May Inger and only he has to face off the monster, Strong resilience and personality had taken him through this time, and unlike before, he didn't give up. Defeating the monster gave him relief. He sighed a breath of relief, and the other members of the group who were healed, especially his partner, looked at him in awe and were happy he had defeated the monster. The fight was so crazy, and the ground he had fought on with the monster had a very big dent. It was a very big moment of triumph. He was discussing with the other guy in the group and said he was glad everyone was safe. Still, he was told it all thanks to him, as without his big fight and resilience. They couldn't have been able to do anything, and who knows for a guarantee, they could even have been dead meat by that time. Everyone started heaping praise on him for his just achieved feat. One told him he had become stronger. Stronger than she knew him to be? Someone else said he was as cool as expected. At the same time, the male figure looked at him with a challenging face and said next time, he wouldn't lose against him. He also apologized for what he had done earlier when he had bullied him, and everyone was in a good and lively mood after the victory. So someone suggested that since everyone had recovered enough to chatter noisily, they had to start heading back out of the dungeon and into the city while being jokingly accused of being too blunt. And at last, the rank H Red Shadow dungeon was cleared. Back outside the dungeon, with the press and a lot of people still gathered to witness the one who would be named the championship who had defeated the rank H Red Shadow dungeon, lots of cameras and microphones, Reporters waiting in anticipation, all having one focus of the look, the dungeon entrance. Suddenly, someone saw some movement from the entrance of the dungeon and called everyone's attention to it, telling them to look, and alas, it was the Senku, no green squad, the flash of the Crimson Lotus squad, they had returned. Well, no one would believe that they had just conquered such notorious dungeon without proof, and luckily enough for them, Makoto held somewhat necklace-looking object, and he told them it was the drip item from the Nine Tail Monster, a demon banishing necklace, and he huddled everyone up to discuss about something. He told the, that the necklace was a proof that they defeated the Nine Tail, so he wants to give it to the team, and he wants them to say that the five of them cleared the dungeon while excluding him. Even though at first they were not completely buying the idea, he told them he didn't want to stand out, so at last they made the announcement and said that the Red Shadow dungeon was cleared by them, the flash of Crimson Lotus also alongside them, and Hell was Maria. Everyone was amazed and happy at the feat they had just achieved and had plenty of different questions to ask them like how they conquered the poison pond and if the dungeon's boss was as tough as expected while what took others' attention was the model Maria who looked so very cute in the mood of the Mary. 
Makoto was asked if he was really pleased with not taking any credit in the just concluded victory, and he said yes, that was perfect, and in his head he thought of leaving while he still had a chance as they all thanked him for his work with them. When he told them he was leaving, they tried to talk him out of that idea as they told him, since they were in Okinawa already, they could enjoy the town together. Still, he told them if that would happen, it could be the next time they meet, and they said they would hold him to it so that he could set out to leave. As he was leaving, someone called out to him, and slowly he turned his head backward to see who called him. It was Mizukawa who told him any time he came back, they would always welcome him as their friend, and so, in a somewhat emotional scene, he left. As he was walking going to where only he knew, he thought about what had just happened in the dungeon, as he had to combine skills to defeat the monster, and in his mind he thought he had never even thought of combining skills before, and realized there could be so many combinations possible who really expands their tactics, and above all of it, it was fun also thinking it was not just about levels, but depending on how they use them. The skills could make them stronger, lost in his thoughts, he was brought back to reality with a shout of his name, and on looking back to see who that was. It was his team partner Maria, and he asked her what was up, but she said remained him that they need to report to her father and mother, and they had to leave immediately at that instant. But he asked her why she won't go alone, but she asked why he would say such a thing as the report isn't just for one person person, but he told her to go alone, but she wouldn't bulge, and went to hold him close, but he immediately warned her not to cling to him. But she told him she enjoyed and had fun with him, how they explored together, talked together, ate together, and even fought together going on. She told him she has spent her whole life showered with a lot of love from her father and mother and has being happy, but now she knows that there's so much happiness outside too, and if her partner is Makoto, she would be surely delighted, and so there was no need to worry, and she instead they needed to go together to report. Makoto surprise asked how they had gotten to such point. He told her that she was admirable, but he had a fight with his parents for a long time and hadn't been home in about eight months so he needed to apologize. Then, immediately, she turned back and said she disliked him for not treasuring his parents. She would come back when he becomes a gentleman who's more suitable for her. So she left while he said her goodbye, and they both promised to meet again as they formed a decent team. Then, after walking for a while, he finally got home, looking nervous as he stood in front of the door to his house, not knowing what to expect, whether good or bad. But at last, he summoned up. Courage opened the door, and immediately, he did. The first person who saw him was his mother. She threw herself at him, hugged him with her teary eyes, and welcomed him back home with the words, Idiot! Welcome back! His father, on the other side, was standing at the doorway looking at the mother-son bromance. Once they caught his attention and saw him standing, he welcomed him back home, and that's how his eight-month runaway life ended, or so he thought. Once he got home, he determined that his life as a player wasn't over, so he would go back to being immersed in dungeons and contemplating which dungeon to go to next as he stared at his phone. Then, he had a proper child-to-parental conversation with his father and mother. He told them his intentions as he would like to continue as a player, and thought that after having cleared rank H, maybe he could try rank G. So he bid farewell to his parents to tell them he was off. And once he opened the door, he could not believe his eyes on who he saw at the door. It was Maria, his former teammate, looking bright and lively. Then she spoke some words that threw him off balance and asked him to go out with her. Not knowing what to do or how exactly to react to what he just heard, the only thing he did instinctively was to shut the door behind her as she shouted his name from outside the door. After many shouts and thoughts, he finally came out and followed her to that date of hers. And his greatest surprise, the whole Senku No Green Squad, the flash of Crimson Lotus Squad. He asked if they were there, as if just to be sure he wasn't seeing something else, but then it became clear he was seeing the real people as they greeted him. Good morning and hello, they said he told them they would hang out. Maya next time back when they were I. Okinawa and that next time was now, as Maria had earlier told the squash would be returning home the following week. So they felt that was a good way to say goodbye to her. And while they were talking, he apologized for what he was about to do, which was cut them short as he said he on his note would like to return to the dungeon. They asked him if that was all he cared about, and told him how about saving time for his youth, emphasizing his youth. But the reply he gave them was that the dungeon was youth, and they could not help but wonder if he was okay and if nothing was wrong with him. Since the dungeon is where he wanted to go, Maria suggested how they all go to the dungeon after their date, and they all agreed. So they decided to go on their date. On the other hand, Makoto had to ask them how they got his address, and they told him that was something he was better off not knowing. They got into a cloth boutique, and Makoto was told since all he only wore were old things, he should allow the professional model, 
which was Maria, to choose something for him. He then remembered what he and Maria had spoken about and confronted her, saying she had told him they wouldn't see each other for a while when they said their goodbyes. Still, she told him she thought he would have been sad about not seeing her before she went back home and wouldn't be able to see each other anymore. She wanted to repay him somehow as he had always been nice to her and told him not to be rigid and let loose so he would enjoy all he wanted. And he thought that was true since he was there already. He would also do well to make sure he enjoys his time out. Then she picked him up a t-shirt which he said was beautiful. From the clothes store, they went to an aquarium called Umino Aquarium. But before they could say, Jack, Maria flew into the aquarium saying she loved the aquarium. They were trying to call her back, but before they could, it was late as she had gone. Makoto said the aquarium here was a bit small compared to the one in his hometown, and he would like to see the penguins. While she was shouting at Maria that she was going to get lost, it seemed she wouldn't listen. So she just laughed it out saying it looked like she was innocently enjoying herself. Makoto asked Mizukawa if it was her idea to come to the aquarium and asked her what exactly she wanted to see. Then she told him she wanted to see jellyfishes, as she likes them so much because they are mystical and mysterious. So they went eye to the aquarium and got close to where the jellyfish were, and she admired them telling Makoto that many of these jellyfish are kept as pets, and there's also a world's jellyfish museum that has rare jellyfish on display after touring the aquarium. They decided it was time to go as Mizukawa said, Shirei had so much fun, and Makoto said he did too, as she said to be able to see jellyfishes that are rare to come by, and on top of hanging out with him were the highlights of the date for her just then. She suddenly or Makoto remembered something, and he brought out a gift for her, as he told her to keep it as a souvenir, and she I shouldn't mind as he got something for the other two too, and if she doesn't like it. But before he could finish, she thanked him and told him that she would keep it for the rest of her life. As he told her he randomly picked it while he was looking at the Umi Buddha t-shirt, suddenly they remember that they could find the remaining toe as Get didn't even see them in the aquarium. And just then Mizukawa got a phone call, and the person on the other end of the phone was screaming for help. It was Benny. Alas, it wasn't something serious. They were at the amusement park riding different rides while the pair of Makoto and Mizukawa waited for them while discussing about how tough they were to be able to ride the roller coaster. So Mizukawa asked if they were going to split the loot from the Res Shadow Dungeon evenly. But Makoto told her that he was fine and it doesn't sit well for him as he's finished the dungeon and told her it's fine saying, a man only needs so much money to live without struggling and he only just wants to enjoy the funds of the dungeon. Then Makoto said, Speaking of does their team, the Senku Buren, have any plans? She said they do, but it's also the target of most players, and he also have heard of it the rates rank. As horrendous Mount Dungeon also know as the last dungeon, the dungeon is a terrifying mountain standing tall near Yusori Lake Aomori province and also a very scary dungeon. Makoto visited it about 12 months ago and the gate was shut and it didn't bulge no matter how much he pinched it, and the atmosphere was heavy and chilling with absolutely no sign or feeling of life. Mizukawa said Kamashiro cared about that particular dungeon, and she's not exactly annoyed about that, but she's a boy afraid. Then suddenly, she decided to change the narrative and said they should not be talking about dungeons when they are hanging out, and he has to make up for it by buying some drinks, which would be on him. Still, he challenged her, saying it was she who was particularly talking about everything by herself. Just then, he left to buy a drink. Still, as he was coming back, he said that Mizukawa was being harassed, as some guys were asking her if he was alone and if she should come to hang out with them. Still, while she was sitting there a lot sacred, Makoto got there and asked him what took him so long. She told him that while he was away taking his time, those weirdos were harassing her, and he said he thought that they were her friends. She said which eyes of his sees that they were her friends. Still, they faced Mizukawa and asked how she would call them weird as they heard her report them to Makoto. She then went up to tell them that they were thick-headed. They were wearing weird shirts too, like idiots. They got very annoyed introducing themselves as the strongest YouTuber duo, the Tsuchikura brothers. They would pay for trash talking them and they gave them a chance to apologize while they could. In Makoto's mind, he wondered why they would have the guts to make him a level 20000 player. The YouTuber then got angry and sad they didn't even need to apologize and they won't forgive them. Showing their YouTube videos, the YouTubers were trying to boast of what they do in a bid to intimidate the two. As they say what they value and consider a hot trend is for players to fight each other for fame, and they are the unmatched brothers that everyone knows with a 38 unbeatable win streak. So they said both Makoto and Mizukawa better kuwa raid and record a video with them as compensation for calling them wired. 
And even though he got rejected multiple times and got his lovely shirt insulted, he was lucky enough to come across Nagasawa from the Senku no Gurin and her boyfriend, saying their fight would be premium viral material. But Makoto was quick enough to tell them they both of them weren't dating, but he told them not to worry even if they get injured. They have an excellent staff that can use healing magic level 8. But Mizukawa told them both then, this should be the one to worry, but they were too arrogant and proud and said there was no way even at the slimmest chance they would lose. So they decided to flex their stats and asked if they both know that the starting stats appeared when the leveling system first activated, and it represents the user's physical power. In his head, Makoto said his own starting stats was low, so the YouTubers told them to take a look at their stats as it would be very, very high. And even if they are both 99s, they just can't win. Just then, Mizukawa told the two of them to quit rambling and come at her, calling them the name that initially infuriated them. The t-shirt weirdos. Makoto was trying to calm her down, but she said she couldn't take it again as those two were getting on her nerves, but Makoto told her she had no reason to fight them, and she should let it slide. But she said he could stand by and watch if that's what he wants. But as for her, she is definitely going to fight them. Be reminded her that her level is 94 and her weapon is Sordon's. So she told her not to fight. Instead, he would fight on her behalf. But she asked why he would do that. And he told her that she can't fight and win someone higher than her. And she can't just slash them. Then she agreed reluctantly and told him that if he loose, she would kill him. But he assured her that there's no chance he would loose. And the YouTuber heard that and said he really had a slick tongue. So they set their camera to the cameraman and asked him to record as the fight was going to start. The YouTuber, though, he had to attack first to give him the upper hand, so he did attack first and hit Makoto. Then he laughed and asked Makoto how painful his attack was and told him to run his mouth again. Seeing no reaction from Makoto, he concluded that he had tough bones and was going to attack him again after asking him if he could block his next attack. But in Makoto's head, he was thinking the guy definitely talks way too much. Then the YouTuber used his magic hit the Tuchiku rush to hit Makoto. Mizukawa saw the speed of the attack and was surprised to see it was fast. While the other YouTuber said the results were clear, as no one had ever stood up after being hit by his brother's Tuchiku rush. But to his surprise, even with his rush, he couldn't hit Makoto and was surprised he couldn't. But before he could finish thinking, Makoto hit him with just one punch. And that seriously sent him flying like a bird while the other guy was shouting for his brother's sake. Mizukawa was also surprised at that hit, while Makoto felt he had used all his strength by habit to hit the guy. On the other hand, the brother said his brother couldn't lose and must have used magic or some dirty trick. Suddenly, he also threw air magic at Makoto, aimed at Mizukawa, but Makoto ran towards her, carried her, and dodged the blow. To the brother's surprise, as he was surprised, he dodged it, and meditated on the fact that they had just lost, while Makoto and Mizukawa were both glad that they had just won. He asked if she was all right and apologized. He said he had forgotten she was behind him and that he had been dogged by instinct. Just then, he noticed he had thrown away the stuffed animal in his hand he got from Maria. Then the two YouTubers, seeing that they were being defeated, decided to pledge their allegiance to Makoto, and they said they would follow him for the rest of their life. The other brother attested to that too, but they told them to go as they would only be their bad luck, so they apologized and left. Mizukawa said she was tired and would go home, and Maria said that was okay too. However, Makoto reminded them they still had a dungeon to go to, as they had earlier decided in the say that after their hangout, the dungeon was the next place they were going to visit. So he asked them if they were going to come with him, or they were just going to go home as they just planned to look at the situation of things, as they had no choice since they promised earlier, they all then agreed to follow Makoto and go to the dungeon as originally planned. Meanwhile, the video of their fight with the PvP YouTube brothers was being streamed a lot, and they had 800,000 views in a day. Alone seeing this, he felt they should have recorded him with permission, but they didn't. And while he was still watching at home, he got a call from someone who said he saw the video of the brothers, and Makoto told him he didn't want anyone or any attention or anything. But the Peron asked him what level he was and went straight to the point. He asked Makoto to fight him one-on-one -on -one, boasting that he can defeat. It was the 20th floor of the rank G Blue Cave dungeon with plenty of monsters trying to attack him. And he was fighting vigorously and defeating the monster one by one while leveling up by six or by seven and even by five. Alas, he was already in the G dungeon. And as he finished fighting, his mind went back to the call. The caller said that he had once shown him his status board, its infinite level up and 1,000 times experience points. 
and he's got quite interesting skills. He continued saying he could only find it amusing at that time. But now, knowing the limit of leveling seeing his fight with the Nine Tails, and the fact that he defeated the Tsuchikura brothers, he now believes it that he's beyond level 99 now. But Makoto, on the other hand, was skeptical as he couldn't read the caller's intentions. Makoto asked him what exactly he meant by a fight and what the point was. The caller responded that there was no purpose for him. Still, he had always achieved everything he wanted and needed without effort, so even before the leveling system appeared. He stands above everyone else except Makoto, so he wants to put all his might at once and try his best to surpass them. Still, there's no need for a purpose, meaning since the start when there's someone who knows about your skills, who got a chance to beat him. But Makoto asked him how a man who likes interesting things like him and asked if he can just not be riled up. But he answered him and said he didn't mean they would fight at that moment as he had his own life too. But Makoto told him he should do whatever worked for him. While going out, Makoto concluded that he didn't seem to be lying and that even if it were up to him, he wouldn't know how to defeat an opponent like that. Asat, this time, Makoto was already on level 23011 as he was still lost in his thoughts. Suddenly, someone came down from where he didn't know with a thud as the person person was landing. He looked keenly at the person person, trying to figure out exactly where the person person fell from. It was a female. At that time, she suddenly saw him and asked if he was Sakura. Surprised, he asked her how she knew his name. And she told him that she had seen the YouTube Brothers video the other day, and she felt like he was very, very cool and asked if it was him that defeated the dragon monsters. In the light of her excitement, she remembered that she had forgotten to introduce herself, which should have naturally been the first thing she should have done. Once she remembered that, she decided to go on. She introduced herself as Isomiki and thanked him for saving her life. Makoto told her he didn't recall saving her, but she said he was humble and explained to him that she got swallowed by the dragon-like monster, and if he didn't defeat the dragons, she would be in there her whole life. He was looking at her confusingly, wondering what drug she was on because her words weren't connecting. Then she told him there was someone else inside the dungeon he was in who didn't have weapons or equipment. He asked her what was up, and she told him they had just started a staring contest, but Makoto looked away almost immediately. At the same time, she was jubilant that she had just won a staring contest the other party didn't even voluntarily participate in. She was so happy that she said she had never lost the game before, and as promised, Anyone who loses pays for burgers. Makoto asked her why she was there alone, as he didn't see anyone with her. She said that was because no one explored with her. Makoto wasn't even sure she was serious, as she was alone in the rank G dungeon with no gears and no weapon, and all the way in the 20th floor unless she has an infinite level up. So he immediately asked her what level she was. She said she was on level 22, which is of course so embarrassing, but she was 18 years of age then. He said she was lying and there's no way she would have survived in a dungeon at level 22. She told him it was true and asked why she needed to lie, and even volunteered to show him her own status. But as they were discussing, the monster was fly at a fast speed furiously towards them, and suddenly, the monster once again swallowed her. He was surprised again, and was curious as to how she's in level 22 and managed to get to that area of the dungeon, so he wanted to see how she did it and went on to rescue her. But upon rescuing her, he saw no signs of wounds or injury on her and wondered what kind of person person she was. But all she could think about was that she was holding hands with him. Sakura was given the surprise of his life. He had to ask Isomiki if she was okay. Still being her cheesy self, she told him she was okay because he saved her. He corrected her, telling her he meant something else entirely. He was more curious about how she took the dragon's fire head on and even got swallowed by the dawn dragon without showing any sign of damage whatsoever. He was positively creeped out, so she decided to tell him even though she didn't tell many people about it. She told him she was able to go through all that and still come out with minimal damage because of her skills, which were quite unusual, but powerful nonetheless. Iso Miki has the skills of negating physical damage and magical damage. Sakura was skeptical about this and did not quite understand how someone could have the skill of negating damage. It didn't add up to him. Noticing his skepticism, she asked him to try and kill her so she would be able to prove her point to him. At first, Sakura didn't want to, but when she kept nagging at him, he finally decided to kill her. He couldn't refuse her, so he told her to step back and focus his magical attack on her head. As soon as he released his magical attack on her, it was as though something had just made it fizzle out. He was perplexed and had to ask her what just happened, so she explained to him 
seeing that he was starting to believe her. She told him that a barrier always materializes and covers her entire body to negate any and every attack. Still, she could hold him without the barrier materializing when he wasn't attacking. She even went on to demonstrate by holding him. Even after witnessing her impressive skills, he still didn't think Sakura belonged in that dungeon, as it was way too dangerous for someone of her level. He told her that she needed more experience before taking such a high risk. But then she revealed her motivation, money. She was taking such risks to obtain rare items from high-level dungeons and sell them for a profit. Sakura's admission surprised him because she didn't strike him as someone who was solely after money. However, he didn't say anything and instead announced that it was time for him to proceed to the next floor, with Iso following closely behind. He thought her unbeatable skill set might not be so unbeatable when she cried out for help. He looked at her to see what had happened to her and saw her on the floor with two poison lizards licking at her and covering her with their poisonous saliva. He thought he was right about her skill set having weaknesses. She could not avoid debts or attacks that changed the skin's condition, so he went to her rescue and used his magical abilities to kill the monsters in one strike. She was in awe of his combat prowess and told him he was very strong. He paid no attention to her and instead gave her some detoxifying herbs to help with the poison. But she couldn't move because of the poison, so he had to feed it to her. And the way she ate it was as though he was feeding a pet, especially when she asked if he had mayonnaise. After being detoxified and cleaning up, she thanked him for coming to her rescue and helping her with the detoxifying herbs. He waved her off and gave her a lecture, telling her that he didn't think it was wise for her to put herself in so much danger by going to high-level dungeons before leveling up. He told her she should start her way up from lower-level dungeons instead, but she was adamant about continuing on the path she was on. She told him she needed a lot of money and she needed it fast, and that the high-level dungeons were her only way out because she was in a lot of debt. She told him about how she and her sister were orphans, with a lot of debts because their legal guardians, parents, had died and left them with loads of debts at first. Her sister had tried helping out by working to pay off the debt, giving her pocket money, and sponsoring her education as well. Still, she noticed it was too much of a burden for her sister to bear alone, which was why she was trying to help her nice sister and relieve the burden on her head by making money fast, even though it was very dangerous for her, and at the same time, give her lovely sister the time and chance to enjoy her life for once without having to worry. She apologized, telling him she had no idea why she felt safe enough to rant to him and told him she had to go now. As she was going, he approached her and grabbed her by the hand, turning her to him. She had a faint coloring on her cheeks when she asked him what the matter was, and he first apologized for making her uncomfortable and told her that if she desired, he would like to help her on her quest to complete the dungeon, and, perhaps in the process, help her level up. Realizing what he had just said, he tried to take it back, but it was too late as she had already accepted his offer. At first, he thought he was helping her because of her determination, but eventually, he knew it was because it was too dangerous to leave her alone. They started their quest renewed with the zeal to help each other, and she told him it was like having a little brother to help her. Meanwhile, he thought she was like an unreliable elder sister. Unable to keep quiet for even a minute as they walked, she told him that going alone was very sad for her, but going with someone as powerful as him, whose level 20000 is much more reassuring and safer. He was beyond surprised as he couldn't figure out how she knew about his level. He was shocked and had to ask her how she knew about his level when he had kept such a closely guarded secret. She replied to him, telling him that when she was falling earlier, she had taken a quick peek. It was how she found out how strong he was. After hearing her explanation, the shock started to wear off. He realized it was his fault for her finding out in the first place. He had been far too careless. She was determined to work hard and reach his level, level 20000. But imagine her shock when he revealed that level 99 was the highest level. She couldn't believe it, especially since his level was so much higher than that. Confused and curious, she asked him how that was possible. He sighed, realizing she wasn't supposed to know about the highest level. It was a closely guarded secret that he had tried to keep hidden. But since she already knew part of it, he trusted her with the truth. He clarified that it was important for her to keep it a secret. So he explained everything, sharing the secret behind the levels. Fast forward to the next level, they were on level 22 and facing a goblin sorcerer. Still, they quickly noticed that the goblin sorcerer only had one attack, so he let Iso face it, telling her he would intervene if she needed help. It turned out that she didn't need any of them, 
as she defeated the goblin. Her skill level had increased by 13 since he started helping her out. He couldn't believe she did it all by herself, but still, he couldn't help being proud of her and her progress. He was messing with her, telling her that she didn't need his help, but she told him that on the contrary, she did as his presence gave her the confidence she needed to face the goblin sorcerer. She told him that she would have run away without him being there. He saw something long and big in her hands and asked her what it was. She told him that it was a dropped item and showed it off to him, asking him what he thought about it. He told her that it was a great weapon and would help her out a lot, and with that tea in mind, they charged to the next floor. Time passed by in a flash as they went from floor to floor, and they weren't just facing monsters, but also picking up new skills. I also learned magic like flash magic, and even increased her skill level by a long count. They had gotten a lot of rare items as they progressed up the floors, and it got to the point that not even Sakura knew what all the items were, so they sat down facing each other, cataloging the items and trying to figure out what the items could do. He offered to help hold the items for her so she could focus on leveling up, and then if she could sell the items in the future, he knew it would help pay off her debt. They had gotten to the 35th floor and were not looking like they would stop anytime soon as they kept advancing and facing different and stronger monsters, with Iso getting stronger and stronger. She hadn't felt so strong in her entire life, so it was refreshing for her to face so many monsters head-on and defeat them. Of course, it was quite the battle, and she still didn't have enough confidence in herself as she always believed she needed Sakura's presence to do very well. But her skill level said otherwise as she was on a whopping level 67 by the time they arrived at the 39th floor. The battle between her and the monsters she faced wasn't easy though, especially since they kept getting stronger as they went up on the floors. She even went on to face dragons and defeated them. That was a monumental achievement for her since one had swallowed her before Sakura saved her. Using the magical weapon she had found earlier, she slew through all the monsters as though they were just weaklings, and as she did that, her level kept going up, and she learned new magical skills like magical identification. Sakura told her he was wrong, as she didn't need his help at all. He had watched her grow or leap in strength as they progressed. Her levels kept going up, and her skills kept getting stronger. Iso, being her cheesy crybaby self, told him it wasn't true and that she needed him very much. They tried to figure out what her new skill was together. Iso told him that maybe the magical identification skill was for her to recognize and know more about monsters they would face and the item's information. It turns out she was right as she used it on her weapon, and it brought out the information that it was a destructive axe. She felt it was only the name of the weapon it had brought out and figured it was most likely because the magical identification skill was still at its first level. They also tried identifying the other items they had found, but it brought out nothing and they were not sure whether it was the item or it was because the skill was still on level 1. She apologized to Sakura, thinking she had let him down, but he told her that she had nothing to worry about and therefore didn't need to apologize, and instead proposed they move on to the next floor and work harder in getting more items as well. After some time, they were on the 40th floor, and it wasn't what they expected. It was beyond majestic and felt very cold. They heard a loud sound behind them and saw that it was the gate to the floor they were on, closing and locking them in. They now had nowhere to go but to proceed to the floor and see what surprises it held. It wasn't long before they found the surprise. Sakura didn't know what it was, so he asked Iso to see if her magical identification skill would work. It was a dark tiger and the boss of the floor they were on, but Iso's magical identification skill brought out that its weakness was holy light magic, and that was all the information skill was bringing out for her. Sakura thanked her and took a protective stance, standing in front of Iso, she was just about to tell her what to do when they heard a loud sound that shook the floor. It was so loud, they had to cover their ears with their hands for fear of going deaf. Sakura was shocked when his magic didn't work on the dark tiger. He tried using his magic not just once, but twice, and nothing happened. It was frustrating and confusing for him. Then, Iso noticed something was off and asked him what was happening. That's when Sakura revealed the surprising truth to her, that their magic had been sealed. He told her his magic was sealed. He couldn't cast anything, so it made sense that their magic had been sealed. Iso tried casting her own spell nonetheless, and found out that he was right. She was in a state of panic now. She was just getting comfortable with her skills, and now she couldn't use them in a fight. She asked him if they would fight in that state. They knew it would be awfully hard without magic. But before he could answer her question, the Dark Tiger charged at them at full speed. She told him not to worry, and to leave it to her that she would take care of the Tiger alone. She was trying to prove something to him. It seemed so as she readied herself for the attack, 
as the Dark Tiger leaped at her. But her attack mode wasn't quite as she expected. Instead of attacking her with its claws and fangs, it began to expand almost like a black hole, and there was no escape from it. It was so confusing and scary for her. Meanwhile, Sakura was deliberating whether or not he should help her. She had come so far, and he knew she could face monsters alone. But then again, it was the floor boss. He didn't want to take any chances, so the latter train of thought won, and he jumped it to try and help her. Still, it seemed to help her came at a cost that would put both of them in even more trouble, as the Dark Tiger's void would pull him in completely and swallow him, even though he was using all his strength to fight against it. It was making absolutely no difference. As Iso screamed his name, worried about him, he told her to move away, fearing that she would get caught in the Dark Tiger's black hole as well. And just when he was about to issue a warning to her, and perhaps give her a heads up about how she might win the battle with the Dark Tiger now that he couldn't help, the Dark Trigger swallowed him whole. It was like something out of a horror movie. Sakura was in for a real surprise when he fell into the Dark Tiger's black hole. Instead of the expected darkness and flames he thought he would find, rather, he found herself in a stunning crystal palace with towering ceilings. He felt like he had stepped into another dimension or possibly even inside the Dark Tiger's belly. But Sakura didn't let that phase him. He stayed calm and collected, keeping a cool head, scanning his surroundings for potential dangers, and searching for an escape route. Once he got out of that mess, he planned to find a way and go back so he could lend a hand to Iso. After scanning around and seeing no threats, he discovered that he was not in the Dark Tiger's stomach or even in a different dimension, but instead, he was closer. Much closer, as he discovered that he was above them. He could see everything going on below. It was as though the Dark Tiger had transported him away, wanting to focus on Iso first before coming for him, but he wouldn't let that happen. He punched the floor as hard as he could, and it was very hard, but he knew it wasn't indestructible. With enough precise and strong hits, he knew he could break through, but he had to hurry up so he could help Iso. So he went right to work, keeping Iso in his mind as his motivation for the great task ahead of him. Meanwhile, down below, as Iso faced off with the Dark Tiger, she shrieked in fear, thinking the Dark Tiger killed Sakura. Before she could muster a decent defense, the Dark Tiger leaped at her and struck her. Luckily for her, she was able to get her hand up to block the attack, but it still did some damage though as she fell back flat on the floor and her axe flew out of her reach. She was in big trouble and she knew it. She couldn't think of anything to do to fight the Dark Tiger that wouldn't result in her head getting chopped off or disappearing as Sakura had, so she crawled toward the direction her axe flew to. It was the weapon she had against the fierce Dark Tiger. As Iso desperately crawled towards the weapon, her heart pounding in her chest, the Dark Tiger loomed over her, ready to deliver the final devastating blow. It felt like time stood still every second dragging on as she fought against the overwhelming odds. But when all hope seemed lost, she heard a sudden crack and a loud noise that reverberated through the air. In an instant, smoke and dust enveloped Iso, obscuring her vision. It was as if the very fabric of reality had been torn apart. And then, emerging from the chaos, a majestic figure materialized before her eyes, a towering knight, a gargantuan, standing between her and the menacing dark tiger. Iso's awe and disbelief were palpable. She couldn't help but marvel at the sheer size and power of the gargantuan. It was a sight to behold, a true guardian angel in her darkest hour. At that moment, she knew she wasn't alone anymore. The loneliness she had felt since Sakura's disappearance was momentarily replaced by a sense of comfort and renewed hope. With the gargantuan by her side, Iso felt a surge of courage and determination. She watched in anticipation as the colossal knight faced off against the ferocious dark tiger, and she was beyond curious as to how the gargantuan would protect her. But amidst the excitement, Iso's thoughts couldn't help but wander back to Sakura, who had disappeared after being swallowed by the Dark Tiger's black hole. The possibility of him being lost forever lingered in the back of his mind. Her curiosity about how the gargantuan would fight to protect her soon disappeared, as the Dark would defeat it in seconds with one fierce blow. It looked as though her luck was running out, but she wasn't looking as though she was going to give up. No, she had more left. What she did next was pick up the next item that she had recovered and tried casting a spell with it, trying to see what good it would do. But when it did nothing, she tinkered around with it and found out that it was lighter. She shook it around, trying to figure out how to use it to attack and defeat the Dark Tiger. But what came out of it was not what she expected. It was a blast of nothing but pure power.